What's up guys, it's Coach Justin from Ultimate Baseball Training. Welcome back to another video. And in this video, we're talking about how to drag bunt. It's really as easy as one, two, three. Three simple steps. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it in this video. So without further ado, let's get started. So first of all, I think it's really important to talk about when does it make sense to drag bunt? This is obviously not something that you're gonna do every single time you walk up to the plate, every single at bat, or even something you're gonna do every single game. So when does it make sense? Because it doesn't always make sense, right? But there are certain opportunities that present themselves. You really wanna take what the game gives you, okay? So there are certain times when an opportunity might present itself where it might make sense for you to take advantage of that opportunity by laying down a drag bunt. That's what we should talk about first before I show you the three simple steps, okay? Okay, so you gotta be a little bit secretive about this, right? You walk up to the plate, and what are you looking for in terms of, okay, now might be a really good time for me to lay down a drag bunt. Well, the first thing is, and you gotta do this really subtly, okay? So you can't be staring because that's an easy tell for the infielders, for the pitcher. You gotta remember there's a lot of, there's a bunch of different infielders looking at you. The, the opposing coach is probably looking at you as you're walking up to the plate. So you can't do anything that's outside of your normal routine. So you gotta be, you know, part of your routine when you walk up to the plate, you kinda be scanning the field, looking around a little bit. You should do that every single at bat so it doesn't look like it's anything different, right? But what are you looking for? Well, the first thing I think you're looking for is you're glancing towards the third baseman. And if the third baseman is playing way too far back, just think about, okay, if I lay down a bunt here, is he in a position where there's no way that he can get to that ball in time if I lay down a good bunt? and I'm gonna beat it out at first base. So if he's playing way, way back, that might be a good time for you to potentially drag bunt. If he's in, obviously he's gonna get there and make that play and you're gonna be out. You don't wanna do it then, right? So glance at the third baseman, and if he's playing way too far back, might be an opportunity there. Another opportunity looking at the third baseman is maybe he's just out in la-la land, right? And he's not really focused, he's not really paying attention. Obviously the higher you go up, the more infielders are gonna be paying attention pitch to pitch, but even in high school, even in college, right, there's still gonna be times when people have a little bit of a mental lapse. And so if you, before you step in the batter's box, or even when you first get in the box, if you glance at that third baseman and you see that he's either too far back or number two, he's not really paying attention, again, that might be another opportunity for you to potentially lay down a drag. How about this case right here? A left-handed pitcher on the mound, usually it's gonna be a lefty. If a left-handed pitcher has a tendency to really fall off the mound, you know, most pitchers, they fall off the mound a little bit, but a lot of times, they pretty much fall right towards the plate, okay? But if you have a left-handed pitcher who falls really bad to the first base side, and I'm laying down a drag bunt down the third base line, well, what are the odds that he's gonna fall off to the first base side and then still be able to come over here and make that play and get me out? Not very good, right? So pay attention to, this is you know why I always talk about, don't waste your time in the on-deck circle, don't waste your time in the dugout, Pay attention to the game, watch the game, watch the pitcher, see what he does. If, he, if he's a left-handed pitcher and falls off towards the first base side, that might be a good opportunity for you to lay down a bunt down the third base line, okay? And then the last big reason that I think you might wanna lay down a drag or consider laying down a drag is, let's say this pitcher is just cruising. He's going, you know, mowing through your lineup. He's, he doesn't have a lot of pitches. He, you know, he's just absolutely dealing today, right? That might be an opportunity if he's cruising for you to get something started for your team. If your team is struggling, you haven't gotten very many guys on base today, right? That might be an opportunity for you to make something happen because he's obviously doing well. He's doing something right. So if he's cruising, try and disrupt that momentum a little bit. Try and disrupt that pattern. Try and maybe lay down a drag bunt, get on base, fluster him a little bit, right? Set the table for your teammates and get something going. So those are a few times when I think it really makes sense for you to potentially lay down a drag. Now let's talk about what are the three simple steps to actually doing it? Step one is to set your feet. And this is something that trips a lot of hitters up. I know it certainly tripped me up a little bit when I first learned how to drag bunt because when you see it, when you're watching a game and you're not really expecting someone to lay down a drag bunt, it looks like they're doing something really fancy and complicated with their footwork. But in reality, it's really nothing complicated at all. In fact, this is something that I wish I learned sooner. That's why I'm sharing it with you here today. So the first thing is, you know, when it comes to setting your feet, if possible, you wanna move a little bit closer to the pitcher when you're thinking about laying down a drag bunt. The reason why is because if I'm way back in the batter's box, 
my window, my margin for error just got a lot smaller. When you look at the foul lines, I've got to be much more accurate with my bunt. Whereas I'm over exaggerating here, but if I was way out here in front of the batter's box, then all of a sudden my angles completely open up like this. Now again, you've got to be a little subtle with this because the catcher is going to notice if usually you're in the, the back part of the batter's box and now all of a sudden you're at the front, okay? So you've got to make this a small little adjustment, but try your best. You want every single advantage you can get. Try to move a little bit closer towards the pitcher. If you can, have your back foot pretty much on the point of home plate, all right? Now, when it comes to actually setting your feet, which is step one, super easy, simple step one, okay? So I'm in the batter's box, I made a little adjustment. Now all I'm doing is, you know, I'm showing this bunt late, right? On a sacrifice bunt, we're gonna show quite early. On a drag bunt, it's supposed to be a surprise, so we're gonna show significantly later, like as the pitcher starts his motion towards the plate, okay? Then all I'm gonna do for a right-handed hitter is I'm simply gonna drop my back foot just like this, okay? And my feet, I'm focused on footwork right now, but my feet and my, my hands kind of go at the same time. So I'm in my stance here. I'm just gonna drop my back foot like this. And now my feet are in position to go. I'm in like a sprinter stance here, facing my feet are both pointed towards first base, down the first baseline, okay? And that's all I have to do with my footwork, okay? So notice, it's not, it's nothing with my front foot. It's not shuffling around my feet like this, trying to get things going. I know it looks like that sometimes, but it's really not complicated at all. I'm in my stance here like this. All I need to do for a right-handed hitter is just drop this back foot like this and set my bat angle, which we'll talk about next. But as far as footwork, I'm in position ready to go right here. All right, so moving on to step two, like I just hinted at, the next part after we've set our feet is we need to set our bat angle, okay? With setting your bat angle, I want you to keep this phrase in the back of your mind, fair or foul. It's gotta be fair or foul. In other words, you've gotta really, with a drag bunt here, you've gotta pinch the foul line. You cannot afford to bunt this ball back to the pitcher. That's such an easy play if you bunt it right back to the pitcher and it's far too common. So you want this to be fair or foul. Usually you're drag bunting on the first pitch. And so if you foul, if you have a, a pretty good bunt, but it rolls foul here, so what, who cares, move on. You got one strike on you, big deal. Okay, you've got something else, another pitch to, to, to live for, right? But if you just bunt it right back to the pitcher, one pitch, one out, that's not good. So when you're thinking about setting your bat angle, make sure you set it in a position to where it's either gonna be fair or foul, but either way, it's gonna be really, really close to this third baseline, okay? So I'm in my batting stance here, right? I set my feet, okay, and then at the same time, remember, I set my bat angle like this, and you'll notice the end of my baseball bat is sort of pointing, if I want it to hug the line here, the end of my bat is sort of pointing towards first base, okay? So I'm in my stance, set my feet, set my bat angle, the end of my bat's uh, facing towards first base like this, and I'm starting at the top of the strike zone, okay? You don't want to get too low like this, which we'll talk about in step three. Okay, so I'm starting at the top of the strike zone. Any pitch that's above my, my bat here, I'm just gonna pull back and take that. It's obviously a ball. Okay, so simple as that. I'm gonna drop my right foot, set my feet, at the same time set my bat angle. It's gotta be fair or foul. And I'm setting my angle both in relationship to the foul line here, and also I'm setting the vertical angle of my bat. You never wanna have your barrel below your, your, uh, your hands like this, your knob of your bat like this, because where's that ball gonna go up? That ball's gonna get popped up, okay? So you want it to either be, when you set your bat angle, either be flat like this, or even better, I think, is having you know the barrel slightly above the knob of your baseball bat like this. So set your feet, then set your bat angle. Then last but certainly not least, step three is to bunt with your knees and catch the ball, all right? So I'm in my stance. Once again, let's run through step one. What am I doing as I'm setting my feet? Step two is I'm setting my bat angle. I'm gonna do both of those at the same time. I'm starting at the top of the strike zone here and then all I'm doing is I'm adjusting to the pitch because the pitch might not be right here. It might be a little bit lower, right? But still be a strike. All I'm doing then is I'm bunting with my knees. You see what I'm doing here? I'm going up and down on my knees but I'm not changing the angle of my bat. I'm not changing it this way in relationship to the foul line. And I'm also on a low pitch, you see this a lot, people dump their barrel like this to try to get down to that low pitch. Again, that's gonna be popped up there. We don't want that, okay? So I set my feet, set my bat angle. I bunt with my knees. This is how I adjust accordingly based on where the pitch is located, okay? And then all I do after that is I simply catch the ball with the bat, okay? I can go backwards like this to soften a little bit, but just be careful. Don't change that angle like this. 
that's going to go back towards the pitcher. But all I'm doing is I'm catching it with the baseball bat. Just like if I had a glove on right here and I was catching that ball, I'm just catching it. You're not poking at it like this. You're not trying to stab at the ball. When you do that, your risk for missing the ball completely goes up. Your risk for you know popping the ball up into the air goes up as well. So we don't want to stab at it or poke at it. All we have to do is catch it. And then last but certainly not least, when it comes to the drag bunt, bunt first, okay? Too many players get in a rush to get down the line. I'm telling you, bunt first. If you lay down a good bunt, you do it at a good time like we talked about, and you pinch it close to the line here, you're gonna have no problem legging it out even if you've just got average speed, okay? So bunt first, get the bunt down, then leg it out. So that's it, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do me a favor and leave it a like. I'd really appreciate that. And be sure to subscribe to the channel if you enjoy these types of instructional videos. That way you never miss any of our upcoming videos that we're coming out with every single week that are designed specifically to help you improve your game. So click that subscribe button. And last thing, hitters, I put together a free resource for you that I know you're gonna love. It's called the Contact Point Checklist. It's 100% free, you can download it right now. Just click on the first link down there in the description. But what I've done is I've freeze framed the swing at the point of contact and I've highlighted a few key areas that you need to make sure your swing has in order to really maximize your bat speed and your power and your consistency at the plate as a hitter. So 100% free. I know it's going to help you take your hitting to that next level. So go download that right now. Click on the link down below. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.